guys, welcome to J Exploit. My name is Didan, and in today's video, we are going to discuss about cryptographic hash function. Let's begin. Cryptographic hash function. So, what is basically cryptographic hash function is all about? One best example that I can give you that you can easily relate to the hash function is your fingerprint. The fingerprint that you use to unlock your mobile phone or unlock some of the apps in your mobile phone. You can also use the fingerprint to unlock your laptop. Some of you guys might have to use your fingerprint to enter into the office premises. Some of the digital lockers support password plus the fingerprint combination to unlock it. So why all these devices use your fingerprint? Because your fingerprint is your identity. So basically these devices are using your fingerprint to prove your identity. Similarly, in digital world, hash code or hash value is the identity of a data. Let's discuss it in detail. So guys, I would like to tell you one thing. Don't get confused between a hash function and a hash code. Hash function is something that you apply on a message to generate a hash code. The message can be anything. It can be a file, photo, text or anything. So the hash function is applied on this message. The hash function is nothing but uh, some sort of algorithms. Some of them are message digest by SHA that is secure hash algorithm, CRC, cyclic redundancy check. So any of this algorithm is applied on the message to generate a code which is known as hash code or hash value. Now this code is unique for each message you send and even if you modify anything, even if it is one bit that you modify in the message, then the hash code also will get changed. So in that way you can check the integrity of data. And there are few other names for the hash code like fixed line code or digest. So how the hash code got these names that we will discuss later. Now let's look into some of the properties of hash function. The first one is that it is easy to generate a hash code of a message. But the reverse process is really hard. So it is really difficult to get back the original message from the hash code. For example, it is really easy to generate a fingerprint. All you have to do is to give your thumb impression on a fingerprint scanner, it will generate your fingerprint. But what if somebody else get your fingerprint? It will be really difficult for them to get to know that it is your fingerprint. So similarly, it is really difficult to get back the original message from a hash code. Now there is a message M1 and it has got a hash value of H1. Similarly, there is another message M2 and it has got a hash value H2. So in this case, H1 should not be equal to H2. That means the hash value of each message is unique and because of that, it is collision free. Now if H1 is equal to H2, that doesn't make sense. So for example, what if somebody else can open your phone or unlock your phone with their fingerprint? That doesn't make sense, right? The same case is applicable here. So for each message, the hash value will be unique. The third one is that the length of the hash value is always less than the original message. Because of that, the hash function is also known as compression function. That is basically it is compressing the original message. Now last one is that the hash value has got a fixed length. The hash value of each message will be unique, but the length of the hash value will be the same. Next, we will be discussing the properties of hash function with an example. Now, let me quickly show you some of the examples of hash function and its properties. So there is a test folder here and I'm going to create a file inside this folder. Let it be high.txt and I'm going to add some information in this file. Let it be high. That's enough, I think. And now I'm going to generate a hash value of this particular file. And I'm using MD5 algorithm to generate the hash value. As you can see, the hash value got generated for this particular file, hi.txt. Now I'm going to create another file. Let it be jexploit dot txt and I'm going to add some information to this. Let it be welcome to jexploit and I'm going to save this file. Now let me generate the hash value of this particular file jexploit dot txt. I'm using the same MD5 algorithm jexploit dot txt. And if you see the hash value of these two files are different. 
the hash values of i.txt and the hash value of jexploit.txt both are different. But if you notice one more thing that the length of these two hash values are the same. Now one more thing which I said when we discussed about the hash function is that even if you modify a bit in the message then the hash value will get changed. Let's do that. So I'm going to add or modify some information in this file. Uh, let it be one more dot. That's more than enough. So I didn't add it much. I just added one more dot in this particular file and saved it. Now let's generate the hash value of the same file again. Now if you see the hash value of the file got changed because I added one more dot in that file. Because of that, the hash value of this particular file got changed. Now, hope you got a clear picture about hash function and its properties. Now, one another use of hash function is in the web application. So most of the web application will be having a database. In this case, let it be all the passwords and username is saved in the database. Now, the passwords in the database are saved in the form of hash values. When a user tries to interact with the web application, that is when he inputs the username and password, the hash value of password is generated and a query is sent to the database to check whether that particular username password combination is available in the database or not. If it is there, then the user will get access to the web application. Now in this scenario, one of the properties of the hash code was helpful. That is, it is easy to generate the hash code of the password and compare it with the ones in the database. Now let's discuss one another scenario. One hacker attacked on the web application and he was able to get all the passwords and usernames saved on the database. Now the password saved in the database is in the form of hash values. It is very difficult for the hacker to get back the original password. It is very difficult to break the hash values and get back the original information. These are some of the uses of hash function. Okay guys, that's pretty much from this video. Hope you understood the concept of hash function. Before we wrap it up, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get the latest video updates. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.